One of the programming languages taught here at the Tech Academy is Python. Python is a versatile language with many uses. We put together this video to give people a taste of how things are taught at the Tech Academy and how anyone can learn programming. In this video, we'll make a very basic text-based game in Python. In section one, I'll define all the terms you need to know in order to help you through this video. And in section two, we're gonna walk you through the process of downloading Python. And in section three, we're gonna create a very basic text-based game using Python. After completing this video, if you're interested in pursuing more at the Tech Academy, please visit us at learncodinganywhere.com. Once again, that's learncodinganywhere.com. All right, here we go. Section one, basic terms. High level language, a computer programming language that is designed to be easy for people to read and write. High level languages look somewhat like English and the words used have similar meanings to what they mean in normal conversation. Example, code written as follows would be high level language. Print hello, you are telling the computer to write out the word hello. Low level language, a programming language that is designed to be easy for a computer to execute. This is called low level language because it is brought close down to the computer's level of understanding. A person attempting to read a low-level language may become confused, because the lower the language, the less it is like English. Example, most people find that a low-level language is more difficult to learn than a high-level language. It can look like this, M-O-V-A-L-61-H. Here you are telling the computer to put a number in a specific location in the computer's memory. Scripting. Scripting is creating a series of commands that cause your computer to automatically perform actions. Example, you can use scripting to make a web page automatically play a video when people go to that page. Scripting language. The origin of this term is similar to its meaning in a movie. A script tells the actors what to do. In programming, a script tells the computer what to do, step by step, in order to accomplish a specific task or task. A scripting language is a programming language used to make scripts. Often, the tasks these scripts accomplish are valuable to automate so that the task steps don't have to be entered into the computer again every time you want to do those tasks. In principle, any programming language can be a scripting language, because you can write a script for the computer using any programming language you can understand and operate on. In practice, there are programming languages that are better than others for making scripts. These are what is meant by scripting languages. Scripting languages are high-level languages, meaning it is easier for people to understand and read scripting languages than other highly technical programming languages. Example, if you wanted to make it so that every night at midnight a list was printed off of all the people who signed up for your school classes in the previous day, you could use a scripting language to make a computer script to do so. Compiler. When you write code to make a program, you usually write it in a form that looks almost like English. For example, it might look like, if age greater than 18, then print you are an adult. Computers can't understand language like that, so that code would have to be changed into a form that the computer does understand. The compiler is a special program that converts the code that looks nearly English into a form that the computer can understand and operate off of. The product of a compiler would be a set of instructions understandable to the computer that the computer would execute. This would make the computer do what the nearly English code described. Example, you type, if age greater than 18, then print you are an adult. A compiler would take what you wrote, change it into a very low level language the computer can understand, and then relay that command to the computer so it will be executed. One important aspect of how a compiler works is that it takes all of the instructions in the program and turns them all into language the computer can understand before executing the program. There are other methods of converting high-level language to machine-readable language that don't involve converting the entire program before it is executed. IDE. This stands for Integrated Development Environment. An IDE is a set of programming tools for writing software programs. IDEs are a great aid to software program development. An IDE often combines many available tools into one place. Things like a text editor, a compiler, a display of the file structure of the files in your software program, etc. Example, Visual Studio is an IDE created by Microsoft. Interpreter. An interpreter is a special program similar to a compiler in that it converts high-level language instructions into low-level language instructions. The difference between a compiler and an interpreter is that an interpreter performs this action one instruction at a time, rather than converting the entire set of instructions in the program prior to execution. In other words, the interpreter will read an instruction, convert it to low-level language, 
have the computer execute that instruction, then go on to the next instruction in the program and repeat. Example, interpreters are used in scripting languages. Interpreted languages use interpreters, not compilers. Object. In the world around you, you are surrounded by objects. Your dog, the TV, etc. Objects have state and behavior. The state of an object would be the condition, or state, of its characteristics at any given point in time, its size, color, etc. The state of the object may change over time. A balloon, for instance, will not have the same size after a week that it had when it was first inflated, so you can see that an object's state can change. The behavior of an object is what the object does, the actions it takes. In our example of a balloon, possible behaviors might include inflate, deflate, and pop. In programming, objects are part of computer programs. They share a similarity to real-life objects. They have state and behavior. Example, an application might work with a customer object. The state of an object would be the characteristics and attributes of the object at any point in time. The behavior would be what the object could do. Example, our customer object could have states like active or deleted. It could have behavior like upgrade rewards level or add to family account. Objects are one of the first things you can think about when designing a program. An object could be something on a computer that you can click on, interact with, move around, etc. It could also be something behind the scenes that is made up of data and procedures to manipulate data. An object is what actually runs in the computer. Example, let's say you wanted to make two different types of cars on a computer. Each car would be an object. Each object, car, would have its own size, shape, color, speed, distance it could travel without needing more gas, etc. Object-Oriented Programming, OOP. There are different approaches you can take to programming. Object-Oriented is an approach to programming that focuses on objects and data as opposed to actions or some other approach. The first step in OOP is determining what objects you are going to be dealing with and how all the objects relate to each other. OOP is a popular approach to programming computers that is used in many languages. Example, if you were creating a website using object-oriented programming, you would focus on all the things you want included in the website first. Pictures, pages, videos, etc. Then design the basic outline of each type of thing, then on from there, always focusing on the data and objects to be used by and contained in the website. Python, a programming language created in the late 1980s that has the following characteristics. A. Python is a high-level programming language, which means it looks similar to English. B. Python is an object-oriented programming language, which means it focuses more on data and objects as opposed to other approaches. C. Python is an interpreted language, which means it has an interpreter built in, a program which converts the high-level language to low-level instructions the computer can understand. D. Python is a scripting language. One can use Python to make scripts to automate things. Python is considered by many to be one of the easier languages to learn. Python can be used to create apps, programs, websites, games, and many other things. It is a very versatile language with many uses. Python was named after the famous British TV show and movies by the same name, Monty Python. Example. Python is in use in many popular areas. Dropbox.com was created using Python. YouTube, Yahoo, and Google all use some Python for various things, including assisting in searching for things online. Guido Van Rossum, a Dutch computer programmer born on 31 January 1956, Guido Van Rossum is the inventor of the programming language Python. He was employed by Google from 2005 until 2012, where he spent half his time improving the Python language. In the Python community, Van Rossum is known as a benevolent dictator for life, BDFL. BDFL refers to the fact that he continues to oversee the Python development process, making decisions where necessary. IDLE IDLE stands for Integrated Development Environment, and since Van Rossum named Python in honor of the British comedy group Monty Python, the name IDLE was probably chosen partly to honor Eric IDLE, one of Monty Python's founding members. IDLE is intended to be a simple development environment suitable for beginners, 
especially in an educational setting. For example, you could use idle to create a Python program. Variable, the name given to a location in a computer's memory that a program has set aside for use in storing data in the situation where the value of the data stored in that memory location may change over time. This is useful because as the value in that memory location changes during the program's execution, the programmer has a name to refer to that memory location by. Example, you could create a variable with the name product price. This might be set to the value 1099 initially, but at some point while the program is running, the value of the variable product price might be changed to 899. Assignment. This is the action of giving a value, description, amount, etc. to a variable. In some programming languages, you assign a value to a variable using an equal sign. You are stating that that variable now has a certain characteristic. Example, annual income equals weekly income multiplied by 52. You just assign the variable annual income the value weekly income multiplied by 52. Operator. The word operator is used to classify the different actions that can be done in mathematics. For example, plus and minus are operators. When new actions are defined in computer science, the symbols used to indicate them are called operators. An operator is a symbol that represents an action. Example, in programming, commands like AND and OR are considered operators. Example, if person types both John and Sally, then turn the screen blue. AND is an operator. If the person types either Bob or Tom, then turn the screen red. OR is an operator. Other common operators are the mathematical actions for multiply or divide. The symbols used for these operations are usually an asterisk for multiplication and a forward slash for division. Age in months equals age times 12. Price per item equals total price divided by number of items. Function. Work performed by something. A function is an action taken to get something done. In computers, a function is a command put into a computer that makes the computer complete an exact task or series of tasks. A computer function is a procedure the computer performs. There are thousands of functions entered in your computer behind the scenes that instruct your computer on how to operate. Example, when you erase a file on a computer, the file is removed by a delete function. String, a sequence of characters. A string is simply a connected series of letters, numbers, words, symbols, etc. Strings are written by developers when coding as a frequent action. Example, in the computer instruction, print John is smart, the series of characters John is smart would be the string. Call. To call means to demand or direct something. In programming, a call is a direction by a main program to execute the tasks of a subprogram. A subprogram here meaning a smaller program that operates within a program. More specifically, a call is when a program temporarily transfers control of the computer to a subprogram. A program could make many calls to multiple subprograms as the program does its sequence of tasks. Calling is the execution of code. Example, if someone said, call your code, that would mean to run the code you have written thus far. Operand. In math, this is the number that is being dealt with in a mathematical operation. It is not the action being taken with the number, it is the number itself. Example, in 5 plus 6, the operands are 5 and 6. The plus sign is the operator. In computing, an operand is the part of a computer instruction which specifies which data is to be manipulated or operated on. This is the data we are doing something with. Elif. This is a type of command in programming that is short for else if. It literally means, if something else besides what I mentioned earlier occurs, do this. Example. If user types yes, continue program, elif, user does not type yes, close program. Syntax. Every spoken language has a general set of rules for how words and sentences should be structured. These rules are known as the syntax of that particular language. In the programming languages used to program computers, syntax serves the same purpose. Syntax are the rules we must follow when talking to a computer and telling it what to do. There are many languages you can use to program a computer. Each language has its own syntax. Failing to use the syntax of a particular language correctly can mean that whatever you are designing will not work at all. Example, if a computer language required you to write CMD at the beginning of each command, that would be part of the syntax of that language. And if you didn't write CMD at the beginning of a command, the computer would not follow the command because you violated syntax. This would be a syntax error. 
Section 2, Installing Python. In this section, we're going to download Python 2.7. I'll walk you through the process. First, we need to download the latest version of Python 2.7 from the official website. So we'll need to go to www.python.org forward slash downloads. We're now on the official website of Python. Now we can download the latest version for Windows 2.7.9. So we're going to click on download Python. And on the bottom left hand side of your screen, you'll see Python. This roughly takes about 40 seconds to download. Once it's finished, go ahead and click. It's going to bring you up the installation process of Python 2.79. Select whether to install Python for all users on this computer. This is perfectly fine. Go ahead and click Next. Select Destination Directory. By design, Python installs to a directory with a version number embedded. Python version 2.7, so that you can have multiple versions of Python on the same system without conflict. Of course, only one interpreter can be the default application for Python file types. So let's go ahead and click Next. Customize Python. These settings are perfectly fine. Go ahead and click Next. It's going to ask whether or not you want to install this on your system. Go ahead and click Yes and it's going to go ahead and start to install. This takes a couple minutes. One of the nice things about Python, installing it on a Mac OS X <clears throat> Yosemite, it comes with Python 2.7 right out of the box. Once it's finished downloading, go ahead and click Finish. And we've now successfully downloaded Python. To find it, go ahead and go to Applications, and find Python. Here we are, Python 2.7. We're going to be working in the idle. Go ahead and double click that, and it brings the shell right up. Section 3, making the text-based Python game. Okay, it's time to get to work. Anyway, I think we're ready to write some code and make a game in Python. This is just going to be a very simple text-based game like we discussed earlier. And the first thing I always like to do is go over to your desktop, right-click, let's create a new folder. And in this folder, let's just go ahead and call it New <clears throat> Game. This is where we're going to store all of our Python games. It's just easier to find. So next, let's go to our Python shell. And in here, what we want to do is a simple print built-in function. And uh, it's just to show that the output is working on the Python shell. So what we're going to do is type in prints, double quotes, and inside those quotes, let's just go ahead and put hi and welcome. It's just a real quick way of testing. And go outside the quote and hit enter. And as you can see, the built-in function of prints is working. It outputted hi and welcome. All right, so first thing we should do is go to file, Click on New File, and here's where we're going to do all of our coding. Before we begin, let's go ahead and save this file, and save as, go to your desktop, find that folder that we just created, uh, which was New Game, there it is, and let's go ahead and call this game Nice or Me. Dot .py, and the top .py is where all the Python files. That's how you save all your Python files in .py. So click Save. Perfect. So the first thing we're going to do now is a variable and assignment operator. So we're going to do a nice with an equal sign, and we're going to go ahead and set that to zero. So type in nice, which is our variable, and our assignment operator, which is the equal sign, is zero. Next, we need to go ahead and set a mean one. So we're going to go ahead and type in mean. Assignment operator zero. Okay, enter twice. Next, we're going to define a main function. The important reason to define a main function, excuse me, is so that you can import your code into the interpreter and make changes without executing the scripts. So, how do we do that? Well, we're going to go ahead and type in define 
and in Python that's def main open and closing quotes, open and closing parentheses, and a colon. Go to hit enter. Next we're going to go ahead and do start. And this just allows the program to run. Perfect. Let's go ahead and define start now. So again, it's going to be def start open and closing parentheses and a colon. And in here, go ahead and hit enter. Now in here, we're going to go ahead and do our print function again. Let's type in print, and we're going to go ahead and do a simple string. We're just going to say hello and welcome to nicer me. Next, we need to do a raw input. So how do we do a raw input? So we're going to go ahead and create our name equals raw input underscore input. Alright, so what this does is it basically says, hey, we need a, it's a built-in function and it simply sends out a question for the user to, to use. So in here we're going to go ahead and put in what's your name. And it's going to prompt the user to type something. So let's find out what their name is. Let's just go, what's <clears throat> your name? Question mark. Uh, colon. And we're going to go ahead and end it with our double quotes. And enter. Perfect. Next, let's go ahead and do another print function. Print. Let's just say double quotes and inside it. Let's just put hi and welcome to nice or me. And now let's go ahead and redo this. You know what? We want to go ahead and grab their name with the raw input statement. So once they put their name in, let's go ahead and call that. So hello, hi, and welcome. Um, let's go ahead and see what their name is. So if we go plus name, which we just defined above, plus, and end, that should work. Perfect. All right, now let's go do another print statement. Let's start giving some directions. So in this game, you will be greeted uh, by several different people. You can treat them nicely or you can be mean. Let's do another print function and it's P R A T print. Um, at the end of the game, your fate will be determined by how you act it. So let's go and type this out. At the end of the game, your fate will be determined by how you act it. Period. End. Double quotes. Enter. Beautiful. Um, let's just go ahead and test it. It's always good to test your game. So let's go ahead and put the start in there. Perfect. And let's just go ahead and hit F5, or you can hit Run F5. Once we save, hit OK. Let's see how we've done. Okay, it says, hello and welcome to Nicer Me. What's your name? Type in my name. Great. In this game, you'll be greeted by several people. You can treat them nicely or you can be mean. At the end of the game, your fate will be determined by how you acted. Perfect. It's working fantastic. 
go ahead and close out. Now let's continue our coding. Let's go back to the starts and let's just move this down a little bit. And let's keep this here so we can keep testing. So next what we need to do is tab over. As you can see it's lined up with the print statement. So let's go ahead and do a choice. So we're going to do a choice with another raw input and we're going to ask our players do they want to play. So type in choice equals raw input underscore input. <laughs> And here we're going to go ahead and prompt them for uh, do they want to play. So double quotes, do you want to play? And we're just going to give them a uh, yes or no. So they can type in Y for yes or N for no. We need to end that. Double quotes. Perfect. All right. So now we're going to do a couple conditional statements. The conditional statement is simply well, if they choose this, what will happen next? So here, if they choose Y, great, what's going to happen next? So we'll begin the game. But if they choose no, what's going to happen? Or N. So it will probably be, let's print, OK, bye. And we'll just end the game right there for them since they don't want to play. So it's simply done with a couple conditional statements or if statements. So if choice is equal to double quotes Y, we need to put a colon. What happened next? What happens next? So let's go ahead and do the print, and we're going to hit great. Um, give them a little bit more direction. So let's go uh, use m. Or nice. And let's go ahead and end that. Double quotes. And so what's going to happen next is we want the game to begin. Perfect. Let's do another conditional statement. So what happens if they choose in or no? So if choice is equal to in or no, what's going to happen next? Let's just go ahead and print. Okay. Bye. And double quotes. Perfect. So hit enter again. One more enter, and then two backspaces. And let's just go ahead and run this to make sure we're we're doing okay. That we haven't missed anything. So we can go ahead and run it, and save it, and oh, we already have a syntax error. Look what I did. Okay. So if choice is equal to, and actually this is equal to, it's the double equal signs. But that's great, so we're testing our code. Let's go ahead and hit F5. We'll save it and see if it's working. Beautiful. Type in my name. Great, do you want to play? Yes. All right, so we know that's the end of our code right now. Great, use M for mean and N for nice. Beautiful. What happens, though, if we don't want to play? Let's see if that works. So hit F5. And type in our name. And let's hit no. Beautiful. And in. So it says, okay, goodbye. We're doing great. So double tab or backspace over twice. And now let's go ahead and define begin. So, oops. We're going to go ahead and define begin. It's D E F B E G I N. Open and closed. And a colon. All right, so in here, next we're going to use a global nice and a global mean. The purpose of a global statement is to declare that the function or method intends to change the value of the name from global scope. So we simply just type in global, and global nice, and then global mean. So we're going to use this throughout the game. Perfect. Okay, so let's start. Let's start getting into our code here. So the next step, we need to make sure that we're going to have different people come up and talk to us. And if we get a certain amount of nices or a certain amount of means, uh, we need to know how to, how to act. So let's go ahead and start with nice. So we're going to do another conditional statement. So if we pick nice, so if nice is greater than 2, what's going to happen? 
I think we're gonna win the game, right? So print. And in here we're gonna do something cute. Let's go. Nice job. You win. <sighs> Yay. Um everyone loves you. you and you live in a palace all right so now what we need to do is really do another uh, choice or raw input so we want to see if they want to play the game again so let's just go ahead and type in choice equals again we're going to ask them to uh, we're going to ask the user for inputs so inputs open so we're prompting him right now do you want to play again double quotes question mark and space and then y for yes and n for no space double quote and we're going to go ahead and end that. So now we're going to do another conditional statement. We're going to do two of them. So if they choose yes, what are we going to do? And if they choose no, what's going to happen? So if choice is equal, and again it's double equal signs, yes. Let's go ahead and print. Okay. Let's go. And what we need to do is reset the ver uh, the, uh, the global. Nice. So nice. We'll go back to zero, and then we want to go ahead and begin. Open and closed. Perfect. Tab back. What happens if the choice is no? We probably just want to end the game, right? So let's go ahead and type in if choice is equal to know what's going to happen. Let's just do a simple print statement. Print, I don't know. Say no more. Da, 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 da. Bye. See you later, alligator. And double quotes in that. Perfect. And let's just go ahead and hit exit. All right. Hit enter. Now let's go ahead and define me. So enter again and backspace twice. So if mean is greater than two, what's going to happen? Hit enter. Pretty much the same thing. The game's going to go ahead and then they've lost the game. So let's go ahead and print. Too bad. You, uh, let's go game over. You live in a van down by the river with no friends. <laughs> and in that, let's go. And enter. All right, perfect. At this point, let's go ahead and test our code by hitting F5, saving it, and make sure that we don't have any errors so far. So type in your name. Beautiful. Do we want to play? Yes. Great. He's nice for me. Okay, perfect. So we don't have any syntax errors or anything else so far. So let's go ahead and keep on. Uh, let's go ahead and keep on going. So uh, if mean is greater than two. So now let's go ahead and do another input. So we're going to go ahead and do a choice is equal to raw underscore input. What are we going to have them do? What are we going to prompt them to do? Let's just say, do you want to play again? Double quote. And then Y for yes. 
and aim for no. Space, ending it, and closing it. Perfect. So again, the, tr uh, the raw input is just a built-in function with an output of yes or no with that particular piece of code. Then we're going to do another operator. Um, and it checks to see, an operator basically checks to see if the two operands are, are equal to. If they are, this is what's going to happen. If not, we need to do another choice statement. So here, go ahead and put enter twice. And let's go and do another um, operator. Or another condition, excuse me. So if choice is equal to double quotes, yes, what's going to happen? Print OK, let's go. Perfect. And then we need to reset the variable mean. Right to zero. And then we need to go ahead and begin. But what if it's no? So again, we're going to go back, tab over, or excuse me, backspace over. If choice is equal to no, what's going to happen? Let's just go inside, print, off you go. And we're going to go and exit. Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and throw something in there. What if they don't hit Y or they don't hit no or N? Let's go ahead and do an elif statement. So elif choice puts a condition is not, say do not equal to, Y or N, what's going to happen? Let's go ahead and do another print function. Print, uh, please enter Y or N. Over one, and our colon. Excuse me, no colon. Perfect. So now let's talk about this. So at this point, what happens if they go ahead and they hit Y? We need to go ahead and begin the game again, right? And if they hit No, we need to X that game again. But if they do it again, we need to do another raw input statement. So here we go. So choice is equal to yes. What are we going to do? Begin. How about enter the tab over one? If choice is equal to no, let's just go ahead and print um, see you later, Alameda. And then we need to exit the game, right? Perfect, look at that. All right. And now, so enter, and then backspace one more time. Um, so again, what if it's not? So we need to check to see um, if it's equal to or not. And if it's not equal, then the condition becomes true. So we're gonna do another if statement. So if choice is not equal to Plus, double quotes, and inside I'm going to put Y for yes, or N for no. What are we going to do? We need to do another choice input. So choice, raw input, underscore input. Uh, we're just simply asking them to do, do you really want to play again? So double quotes, do you Mark. Um, y for yes again, and in for no. And in that 
nice double quotes. Perfect. That should work well. Alright, at this point, let's go ahead and test our game again to make sure that we don't have any errors. So F5, save it. There's an error in the program, invalid syntax. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we did wrong here. Raw input. Oh, look what we forgot. No syntax. So raw input space equals raw input. Choice equals raw input. Perfect. Let's go ahead and test it again. Hit F5. Everything's going to be saved. All right, so it looks like the game's working here. It's not going to take us very far because we need another condition. So yes, we want to play. Perfect. Good thing we keep testing our codes. All right, so this is the fun part of the game. So this is where we get to decide what's going to happen. So tab over three times. And let's go ahead and do another raw input about having someone approach us. It's a built-in function, the raw input, like we discussed earlier. So let's go ahead and make a pick equals, we forgot earlier, raw input. And we'll hit, double quotes, someone. Uh, approaches, I think it's called approaches, right? Someone approaches you to talk. Will you be nice or mean? Question mark. Again, we're prompting them with a string. What are they going to choose to do? So Y for yes, and then in for no. We need to end that with double quotes. Um, oh wait, no, 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 no. We'll go in for nice and in for mean, like we discussed earlier at the top, up top. And we'll end that. Perfect. Hit enter. Now let's go ahead and start coding this. Go ahead and tab over once. Now tab back and stay right underneath the pick. So if pick is equal to nice or in, what's going to happen? Let's go ahead and just put another function, print. Um, they smile. wave and walk away period in that so now what we want to do what we want python to do which is really great at is tracking how many nices or how many means they've chosen so a simple way of doing that is we're just going to go ahead and assign nice equals nice plus one All right and then let's go ahead and add those two together. So print, double quotes, you currently have in that. And what do we have? We're going to go ahead and add a string. So str, we're going to add the object, which is nice. And then we're going to finish out that string plus Double quotes, space, nice, period. Beautiful. And then we're going to go ahead and do the begin. So it keeps playing over and over again until the condition is met. All right, what happens if they pick to be mean? So if pick, which we assigned earlier, is equal to put mean or m. What's going to happen? Let's go ahead and then the output. Um, they frown. Glare at you and storm on. So we did not treat them very nice. So now we need to go ahead and do the mean equals mean plus one and let's go ahead and print he currently have create a string str 
str plus str <laughs> plus str mean plus just like we did above double space double all right perfect and then what do we need to do we need to do it. All right, so I think that's the end of our code, the end of our game. Let's go ahead and run it again. So hit F5. And hey, look at that. <laughs> There's no errors. So, what's your name? Hi and welcome, Adam. In this game, you'll be greeted by several different people. You can treat them nicely if you mean. At the end of the game, your fate will be determined how you act. Do we want to play? Heck yeah, I want to play. Great, use M for mean and M for nice. Someone approaches you to talk, will you be nice or mean? Uh, let's go and see if nice works. So nice. Great. They smile, walk away. They wave and walk away. We currently have one nice. Pretty cool. Someone approaches you to talk. Will you be nice or mean? Let's go do nice. Perfect. They smile, wave and walk away. We currently have two nice. Someone approaches you to talk. You remember it's greater than two. You win. So they smile, wave and walk away. We currently have three nice. Nice job. You win. Everyone loves you. You go to palace. Do you want to play again? Yes. Okay. Let's go. Someone approaches you to talk, would be nice or mean. Let's try the mean. So mean works, they frown, let it off. We currently have zero mean. Oh, well, we currently have zero mean. We currently have zero mean. Alright, so we've done something wrong. Let's go ahead and exit out of here. So, let's see. Mean, oh, because I spelt it wrong. Look at that. There we go. Let's go ahead and run it. Hit OK. Perfect. So we know the nice works. Let's go back and do the mean. Will you be nice? Do you want to play? Yes, I want to play. And that's going to be mean. So, okay, perfect. You currently have one mean, so it keeps counting. Two means. Three means. Too bad. Game over. Do you want to play again? No. Off you go. All right. Perfect. So we have this done. We have it saved. So let's go ahead and close out of it. Let's go back to your new game. Here's our nice or mean. Click on that and you can do it straight from here. So, Adam. Perfect. And it ends. Wonderful. All right. So, it looks like our game worked perfectly. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.